Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, you'll see how can create an issue and assign to somebody whenever somebody fork a repository through a process with GitHub webhook with the Azure function. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and let's get started. So before going any further, we want to learn about what is GitHub webhook and then understand it first. So what is GitHub webhook? GitHub webhook is a feature within GitHub that you can subscribe to an event happening within GitHub as a listener. So you can start some logic whenever something happens within GitHub. For example, whenever somebody create an issue, make an issue comment, commit to a branch or create a branch or change the security settings or apply code vulnerability settings or anything that you can imagine that are most likely some kind of webhook associated with it. And we can use that, listen to it as a triggering point. Later, you'll see demo of how this is going to get implemented, but this shows a very high level what it's going to look like. On the left side, you see GitHub and you can subscribe to webhook in three different type of levels, repository, organization, or enterprise. That really depends on what are you looking to subscribe to. There is a concept called GitHub app, which you can implement per organization level, but this is another that one utilize GitHub webhook. On the right side, you see Azure function. This is also where we listen to uh, webhook event, where it's fire, and trigger execution point so you can perform some action. So let's finally see the demo of how it's gonna look like. Uh, we will have gonna have an Azure function which can listen to the webhook event. We'll listen to organization webhook. So whenever something happened within the organization uh, which the event we subscribe to, which is a fork, it will create an issue in a repository called repository called notification hub. So here is our Azure function. Um, we're gonna create a new one. So go to Azure function and create, and then you need to fill out some information here. Um, if you have a resource group already, you can use that, but I'm going to use the one I created, otherwise you need to create a new resource group. Um, function name has to be unique, so whatever that you wanna call that, make sure that it follows certain standard with the name is scheme and schema, and then, yeah. And for London runtime stack, it has a different option, um, Node.js, etc. We're gonna choose a Python, and it will generate some script for you, and the version, of course, and the region. Really, depending on where you are, is probably closer to the, your audience. In my case, uh, West Pacific, so I'm gonna choose that. And consumption, typically it's a serverless, but you other also have other options to implement. So choose that, and then let's move forward. And then storage, um, it definitely requires to have some kind of storage, so otherwise you can create a new one. Networking, other option can be leave as default. I will just move forward next till I reach the end of it. End of it. Okay, and then I'm going to create with this option. This might take a little while to be processing, but at the end, you will be able to post the resource and configure and then we can move forward to the next step so finally the resource got created um, so we will generate the link where you can jump into resource called go to resource so when you click that so here it is so there are some options to say refresh stop restart so there's always come some control you have so if you don't want to incur the cost you can go click that what I want to do is is when I go to functions and then create a new function, and you hit the create button, you will see some options like VS Code, any editor, etc. So the way it work is that if you create it from the web editor, you will be only able to edit from there. But um, right now we want to change create it from VS Code because it's easier to do so. So we will select that. 
So here's RPS code. First thing is you want to install extension called fun Azure function. So search for function. And then you will see Azure functions. So we'll go and install that. So once it's installed, you'll see the, those, uh, that icon appear and you need to sign in to Azure. So when you click that, you will bring up the web portal window. So hopefully you have an Azure subscription already and then you log in with that and you will show up here as soon as you logged in. So this might take a little while, so bear with me. And this is all again in the showing the options to log in. So once you expand it, you'll see all the you know services you have in Azure. So what we want is a function app. So there's a function app right there. And so we're gonna click that. We should give different functions you have, which in my case two. But I'm gonna select the sample one. So we're gonna select. So what we wanna do is that we need to open a directory. Um, if otherwise, you need to open a directory. Here is a one empty directory I created called Azure Demo. And go back to Azure Functions. And then under there, there's a place called Workspace. Second one is for deployment, but the first one is to linking. So we'll select our directory called Azure Demo. Select that. And make sure this language you select is matching with the what we created earlier. In our case of Python, it has to match to the version as well. So there are different options um, for the how we want to do it. We will select HTTP trigger and make sure to give some unique name. This just it can be um, the name that you can remember. And there are different options, anonymous, but we will select the functions. So this will generate with some link with each, uh, some code. Um, key code, key password code is in the link. So what this did is actually generated those sem temp sample boilerplate code that happens to generate that implemented uh, in the Python script. So this is what we can use to modify and deploy. Right now, before modifying it, we we'll try to deploy as it is by clicking the deploy button. So this will start the deployment process. So let's watch how this is going to be like. So again, the way you do it is you go to workspace and hit the second button that looks like a cloud icon and then deploy. This will take a little while, but once it's done, you can we can go back to Azure function and then see the code is going to be there. Going back to Azure function, this is what we see. There is a name we created from VS Code, so select that. And make take a little while, depending on your inner speed, eventually will come up. So let's wait a little while. But once it's done, you can select the code plus test. This will show the code that was in local, but got uploaded and promoted. So it will appear eventually. Again, the process depending on services, but also like you know, your inner speed, other things, but eventually come up. One thing I keep mentioning is that you have an option to do edit from here and then the VS Code. If you don't do selected VS Code, it will be only read only from the web portal. So every time you need to make a change, you need to change from the VS Code. Just keep that in mind. Still loading, so eventually come up. So speedily, depending on such so situation like networking speed, etc., will eventually come up. So finally, came up. Um, our files are shown up there. So this is a code as it is. We, if we deploy it, technically, we will be able to be the showing that. So what we need to do next is we'll go to the repository and set a web hook so it can be able to select that. Later, you need to use the monitor option. This is whenever you log or something fails or something successful, where you can monitor. Here is a simple organization called Bryanson hyphen class. So right now it's empty. Um, but I will create go to settings and then I will go to web hooks.
and then I'm going to create a new webhook by clicking that add webhook button there. This paste load URL is you need to generate from Azure. When you go back to Azure function, you'll see a, a link call icon called get function URL. So we need to select that. So let's move your mouse and then to get function URL to select that. This will generate the link. So we will copy the URL by clicking the icon. It's copied. So now when you go back, we we'll paste it in the web page URL. You see there is a key code because it's, it's the one that created with the function. Uh, we we'll change the content type to JSON. Um, there's some security option for verification using SSL. But instead of sending everything, we select the, let me select individual event and we we'll select the fork. But because we want to get notified and we have to get triggered only for the when the fork is selected. Mm -hmm. So, when you refresh the screen, because if there's an Azure function that can listen to it, um, you can see that it's going to be coming with the green mark eventually. There you go. This means the inertial ping is successful. So you'll be able to see the place called recent deliveries when you scroll down. Um, it said came with the 200. As you can see, it will return back with the sudden JSON response. So we will play with this later. Before we do anything else, we will create a new repository where we can get the issue created. So we will call this notification hall, but technically it can be a new repository where we place your issues. Um, and then we will we'll fill out some description, though it's optional. So, so make it more descriptive. So, so you can know that this is for the so technically what it does is that if you anytime something happened with the organization, you uh, fork somebody forks the repository, it will generate a web event and then the, inside this repository we designate it will create an issue and assign that to the right person. So we will call this repository notification. Right now we don't have anything in the issues, so this is where we start back to our VS code we we'll need to modify this a little bit so we want to select requirement that text we need to add request that request module so this will get the tag at the install when you start um, so we'll add import request this is to make HTTP call because we need to make a post call to trigger a GitHub API and import JSON this should be included by default and import OS another default library. So now we will modify this code to make it that suitable for our purpose. API URL base. So this is where we can define our API for GitHub.com. In this case, we will use GitHub APIs to create an issue. So let's go there. Here's our GitHub API REST API documentation. We we'll score down to issues, and we want to find the one that create an issue. So there you go. And you can see the, all the required parameters and then headers and then body. So but, but what we're interested in right now is the endpoint. So we can copy the URL and then go back to our VS code. So first thing is we need the API URL. This is a API for creating issue. So I will replace it with the, my organization name. If you, you use personal account, it might be your username, but it's, in my case, it's organization name. For the other one is repository name, so it's notification hub, and then that's the URL. We also need to send headers. So headers, um, again, this is all defined API endpoint documentation. First thing is, I have a code pilot installed, so it does auto-complete based on the what I typed earlier. So it can smartly guess. We also need to say authorization, which take a bearer token with the GitHub token. Technically, it can be GitHub app token as well, but I will fill out GitHub token. This GitHub token will be environment variable, which I will show you how to set it later. So we'll just name as key name is key GitHub, under, GitHub underscore token. That's the name we will give this time. Um, Make sure to fill in the right information. 
this should be all described in the GitHub API documentation with the headers information. Okay. Once it's done, we will send the we will modify the actual logic a little bit because some are just redundant. We don't need all those things. We we'll change information according to what we want to print out, what we want to send, etc. So we will refactor some of the code because some are not redundant. Some are redundant, so we need to make it adjustable based on the what we are trying to accomplish. So we'll define webhook. First thing is the event. So this is whatever comes from header. Um, so these things are like a request that the headers are defined in the Azure function API. So you want to look into that and then there's headers and patterns. So you want to digest a little bit to make sure it is compliant with that. After that, um, you want to add the logging. This will show up later in the, our monitoring dashboard in the Azure function. So just to, to be debug later, I think it's easier to add some logging statement. Um, so for here, we want to change our code to make it working for our purpose. So here's our fork repository. So we we'll create it. And once it's created, we'll see it. And what we'll find is that when we go back to organization, and go to settings and go to webhooks and go to the webhook and then select the payload we we'll see the one with the fork and this is where we can find the event x hyphen get up hyphen event and there's our payload from this we can extract the information we need so based on that so this is where we can detect what kind of web event it is. In this case, we will see whenever it is fork, we will execute it. So we want to add login. We want to log information. And then we'll add some strike except block. We want to get the now body's uh, payload information. So what we want to do is that we want to add, when you create an issue, we wanted to create it, say, this is based on our original repository, this is our forked repository, so that's why we are trying to get this information in the JSON response. So this is our for repo. Again, this we can get from the JSON, and then we want to log the information. Make sure there is a go, and then we want to log just for the um, error logging later. So. We want to create a issue data. This is what we want to send as a payload. Again, this is all specified in the um, GitHub API documentation. And this is all, all going to be an issue comment. So when we add some custom message, that's what we're doing here. And then we want to add the issue title. And the last thing, or at least one more thing we want to add is that we want to add 
so there's some error here um, let's see what we are need to fix so let's see, assign, add assignee first and we're going to add the assignee as a Brian so my name and the labels with the labels will be showing the issue so there's still as a matter let's see what we are missing is Oh, there's a plus sign missing here, so we add that. So yeah, debugging on the fly. So we can then request, make a request to HTTP request this post. Um, and then issue data headers. And then we're gonna add a pass for the statement. So what we need to do is if it's not a fork um, web event, we want to ignore that. But we want to still see turns on response. So this is kind of based on the what is in below, the original general script. So we can kind of copy and paste it or just fill it up. Or we want to be customizing that. And then same thing here. Again, it's kind of originated because I have a copilot enable, so which is uh, what you're seeing there. The status cost 200, and if it's not a fork event, we still want to get a return some statement response response, and then 200, and we don't need all of these things. We chose to auto generate it. Okay, looks good. So now we want to deploy this. Deploy the function app, and then select our Azure function and deploy. And this time might take a little while. Once it's done, we're able to see updated code in our Azure function. Almost there. And then it's done. Now let's go back to our Azure function. So we'll try to update the code. We're gonna revisit to see how did it change. So once it's sorted, we will see the updated code. There you go. So what was still missing is we need to um, so we need to get the GitHub token underscore token. Okay, so we need to save it as a secure environment variable. So we'll go back to our Azure function and then we'll go to the place call configuration under settings. So you can use it something like Azure Key Vault to store in secure format and get like a lot of data. But this is one way to get environment variable um, as an encoded secret as a start. It might not be totally safe place to do it, but it's one option to quickly test it out. So here we will go to we need to create a new GitHub token. So we're generating a new token. And then we'll fill out some information, give us some name. And then we'll select repo workflow. Well, repo and then demand or the work. Then that should be it. And once it's created, make sure to copy it. And then we'll go back. So this is where you can fill out information, get an underscore token, and fill out the value. Make sure the name match. So now, if we fork repository, once the fork is created, we'll see the result. 
okay for card ready again now we will go to the notification now now there you go our issue got created so all the information you see never to grab from the JSON body is shown up there and then that's under some class and then if we want to go, go back to the webhooks you will see that webhooks has a payload that can generate it so there is our webhook payload and the request you can check there how the request looks like now if you want to go back to agar function and then what we want to do is we want to go to the trigger but this time we want to click monitor and then what we find out is that once it's loaded this is where we can check the log so if it does something does it fail we see the log there also what we add as custom logging info will be also showing up here as well so this might take a little while as far as the reason why it take a while that's hard to know but you will show other event so the logging here actually take a little while even that's executed and error and story shows up so just keep in mind that it may take a little while to show up so you need to be making sure that um, after a few minutes later it got um, either failed or successful you want to come back here so there is a monitoring we we'll select one of the log and you can see this is a, one of the successful one you can see the log we added as login info shows up here and then now if we close that and click the failed one which is because we didn't implement the uh, the fork detection um, you can see the why fail so this is how you can find failure that's it that's it i hope you like watching this video and be sure to like it